up, guys? What's happening? Welcome back to the Creating Space Podcast, the podcast for the people. I'm so excited to have you guys here. Remember, if you hit the subscribe button and you hit the little bell, you'll get notified of all the rock stars that we're having on the show. But today, I'm super excited to welcome you into the Wheelhouse Media Studio to have two atmosphere changers who are killing it in the city of Charlotte and beyond in so many different arenas. I'm talking radio. I'm talking TV. I'm talking podcasts. I'm talking books. It's all over the place, is it? And it's incredible. Fly tie, Jacinda Jacobs. Welcome to Creating Come Space. Come on, what up, West? Let's go. Let's <laughs> go. <laughs> no, you don't, you don't. <laughs> we hang out with West today, baby. <laughs> Creating space. I That's love right. it. Creating space for us. That's right. Creating the space for you. You guys have created space for your gifts. That's where you guys live, and that's why we're having this beautiful conversation today. First of all, let me just say thank you for thank inviting you. us. Yeah. It's an honor to sit on this platform on this podcast. So hopefully, we can share a little inspiration today oh, and have let some it all fun loose. at the same time. Thank you for coming in. You guys are flying at 150 miles an hour. Mm -hmm. You had to open up just a little bit of space in a busy week. You're literally coming from a Hornets, uh, you know, event. Yes, right. right. So thank you for coming in. Um, let's start here. I want to hear about how you two have met because the the story is beautiful, and we've got to talk about uh, how it how this came together. I got one question to ask. What version you want, mine or hers? The real one or the fake one? <laughs> let's start with this. The lies, the lies. I tell you. <laughs> Okay, she wanted me really bad, right? She saw that I was yep. an amazing, super talented host, and she was like, wow, this guy, he's blowing me away. And I was like, yep. girl, get off me. <laughs> you know, we work together. We can't do this. And she was like, but can I, I just have one day. Yep. I begged and for one day. One day, and the rest is history. You've told this story so many times. It's starting to sound believable. It is believable. First of all, I didn't even like him as a person. I did really? not like him at all. Yeah, she was hating on me. I did much. not like him. I went to his Instagram page, if I could be completely honest. Can't wait. His name was Fly, Fly Tie, first of all. Who calls themselves Fly Tie? I'm a little extra. I went to Insta because that's what all women do. You Google this man first. Mm. That's so you crazy. Hit the, you hit Instagram I before went you to hit the IG. website? Yeah. Okay. I went to IG. I'm like, who is this guy that they have me working with? And, and the backstory is I was working for the Charlotte Hornets and they brought in a guest host. So I'm like, who is this guy? Went to his IG. He's laying in the bed with no clothes on, silk red sheets, in a portrait <laughs> mode where it's zoomed in on a car that says, your girl be liking my pics. <laughs> Definitely did not like him at all. He, we had absolutely no chance to even like remotely like each other like that. Didn't like him. Nope. So she's in a meeting with these Hornet executives, and she's and saying, everybody, y'all are bringing in fly tie. Let me show you a picture. I wanted everybody to paint you too. With my shirt off. I'm getting the sexy on. You so extra. That was but, the first thing, I'll be honest. Like, he's extra. I mean, I've learned to love it over the sure. years, but at, at, it was first to turn off. I'm like, he do too much. Right. I don't like it. So right. when they brought him on as a guest host, we did really well. I mean, we did really, really well together, but then I started being like, he's coming from my turf. So I Ooh. really stopped liking him because I'm like, I was counting reads. He had a few more reads than me, or he had some of the hype reads. I'm ah. like, I want to do it. What's he doing here? Yeah. Get him out of here. He need to be fired. <laughs> I, so that's what it is. I mean, I really just didn't like him as a person. Okay, so when was the switch where all of a sudden the flip got switched? Was it you knowing she was going to come your way or was it more of all of a sudden there was something that shifted really in you, Jacinda? What happened? I knew what it was. Okay, we, we started working together and really I didn't see her as a threat. I saw her as a addition to what I do. Mm. She's an amazing talent. Ron D. Wade that, type that, thing. Say let's it again, go. you know? Let's go. I, I felt the chemistry. Got it. So I thought, you know, us working together, we could take this thing to the next level, which we did. Sure. At, at a lot of games, you know, a lot of the fans are like, wow, we love coming here because you guys make it feel like family. Yep. So I enjoyed working with her. Um, and then after that, we became like super dope friends. Yeah. She became actually one of my very best friends. Yeah. And um, I started feeling her. Yeah. Because everything that I wanted in a woman, she displayed that. Which are? Oh, man. What was it that you First started to First of all, she's see? driven. Okay. Uh, she's a God-fearing woman. Mm. Uh, she had goals, and I saw her going after it. She was unapologetically her authentic self. And wow. I liked that when a woman could just be real. Wow. And uh, she was an amazing talent. You know, it, when I saw her, I saw a reflection of who I was. Wow who I felt like I wanted to be. What's that JT song? Mirror? Oh, yeah. Yeah, Mirror, yeah. Ooh, yeah. Sing a little bit. Ooh, I can't, I can't do that. I can't do that. And, and 
I'll be honest. So here I went so hardcore of like not liking him at all. I, to be honest, I had to pray. Wow. I, I remember driving down Billy Graham, praying that thing off of me because I was in a situation years prior doing morning radio and having a host that used to compete with me every day. And I used to simply tell him like, we're on the same team. When mm. I win, you win. Why are you hating on me all the time? And, and here I was starting to do the same thing to him. Wow. And I was like, if I just get this jealousy thing off of me, maybe we could actually take this thing to a new level. Sure. And so instead of me counting reads and everything, I started promoting him. He started promoting me. I started making money out the arena. When you start putting money in my pocket, yeah. I was like, this dude is cool. <laughs> He's right. cool with me. Yeah. But we actually, we really became best friends to the point we were eating together, serving together, working together on and sure. off the court. And um, it was in that time that I was like, why am I looking for all these men out here when all I want to do is spend time with him because he is an amazing man. So it, it was, was an energetic thing, right? Where wow. I was coming out of a long-term relationship and I didn't want to get into nothing serious, but if I did, I said it had to be right. Mm -hmm. So I wrote a list. And uh, one day before the game, she was praying in the locker room and she began to pray over me, you know, and the gifts that I use and the gifts that would be out on the court. And I was like, wow, I kind of opened up one eye. I was like, God, this might be the one. That's crazy because I felt something super powerful. That same energy I'm sure you yeah. felt when you when you two prayed uh, before the show for yeah. us, man. It's something incredible to see the two of you working uh, and uh, influencing and changing atmosphere. So tell me this, what happens next? So you guys are now deciding you want to come together. What happens well, next? We keep who it asked a, who well, we keep, keep it a secret, duh. We don't tell anyone. <laughs> yeah, we definitely did. We, yeah, we, we had to keep it a secret. We just felt that since we worked together in such a high profile capacity, cool. that it would be frowned upon that now we were, you know, commingling, kind of dating. What happens if Jay gets an attitude with him or whatever? So, you know, we still just remain friends. And we literally called our boss for the Charlotte Hornets, called him, asked if we could see him in his office a week before we got married and said we'd was just gonna let you know we're getting married on Friday, and he said, a, "Like what? A few choice really? words." Y'all like dating? <laughs> beep, really? beep, 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 beep. We was engaged. She wasn't even wearing her ring. You I didn't wear the right. ring till the till the wedding, the day we walked down the aisle. Yeah. And that was done by design. It was it was done on purpose because you know when you work in a professional environment, very close together. Yeah. You don't want your supervisors or management that think that it could mess up the flow of what we have built here. Sure. And obviously we had great chemistry. We've been working together for a couple seasons, and um, so when we came to his office, he thought we was actually leaving. about to leave. Right. Yeah. Like yeah. going to another city because the host prior to us did that. She was like deuces and yeah. then eventually wanted to come back. Well, when we said, hey, we need to see you something serious. And then he was like, oh. And we said, we're getting married in two weeks. He was like, what? Yeah. So what, he was relieved to a degree that you weren't yes, leaving? Yes, he was shocked. relieved, but he then was he, relieved, yeah, but he, he was grateful that we were staying. But then he was also really shocked because he said there was so much conversation about our relationship, but everyone was always like, no, they're just friends. No, right. they're just friends. And he right. was like, we knew it. We yeah, knew it, yeah. you know? And so I'll just be honest. Like, I mean, everyone says when you know, you know. But for sure. him and I, we were such great friends. So when we did turn the needle to date, it was just... Amazing. I mean, we dated for only six, six or seven months, and then got married. Boom. So full acceleration since then. I laid yeah, the smack I mean, down. <laughs> I laid the smack my, down. my man, well done, <laughs> my man, well done. So here's what interests me. Here he go. Create, <laughs> creating space is all about the art of creating a space for your gift and your talent yep. to become what you bless others with, right? So what I want to go back to is the backstory of that moment where you guys started to realize that here is my gift and my strength and everything else that is not it has to go yep. and you build a life around it. So if we could start with you, Ty, mm. um, what was that moment in your life where you recognized I could do a number of things, but these things are not fulfilling me and I, there's this thing that I have that no one else has that I know and when I live in that man, I become the most powerful version of myself and I get to serve through that. Mm. What was that time in your life? Like? What you said, so I've been doing this type of industry radio for the last 26 years now wow. of my life. So I'm pretty seasoned in it. And when I recognize another talent that came from the same industry that I have, I can see the gift, Sure. right? So that inspires me to wanna be better. When I would talk about her on, on Instagram, I would never mention her name, but I use a hashtag and it would say, you inspire me, Wow. right? So me and my friends started realizing that was about me. <laughs> really? We started being like, he put, you inspire me. That was about you, Jay. Yeah. That was about you. 
I remember me, me and Big Pat always used to joke about it that. Definitely did. <laughs> but you know you got the right one, whether it's, you know, a mother-son relationship, father-daughter, or best friends, or mentor-mentee. Mm. But especially in relationship, when the person who you're with, who's in your circle, in that space, right, motivates you to become better. I want to be a better man when I'm around her. Wow. In everything that I do. Wow. So I feel like what brought us together was love, but it's deeper than that. It's about purpose, yeah. right? Mm. She's talented on her own and she shines, me as well. I'm so confident in what I do. Sure. Radio, television, live events, but we're supernova together. Absolutely. But I don't need her, Sure. but with her, it complements what I do. Love it. Right? So living in that space, I'm always looking for people, things that can motivate me to want to be better because I'm yeah. always trying to excel and trying to grow, mm -hmm. right? And it's not just in a professional field because I understand that life is not about what you get, but it's about what you give. Mm -hmm. Amen to and that. And I want to give so much more of myself. Mm -hmm. Love that. And when I saw her doing it, the best example is to live it before somebody. She was living it. And I was like, wow, I like that. That's kind of sexy. <laughs> <laughs> So you, was there a level of self-awareness when you were younger to know that this was your gift and you were going to jump into it early on? Because 26 years yeah. is, a, is a heck of a, a resume. Man, I'm a barber far. by trade. Come on so now. So he's a that barber first, yeah. Come on now. So I cut hair. That is what I'm professionally trying to do. So people say, how are you in, um, been on television for the last 10 years, been on radio for 20 plus years. You know, I see you doing the Hornets for the last six seasons or whatever. It's really making the most of your gift. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. what is your gift? What is that? I know what my gift is. I'm not, I'm a great barber. I'm a great public speaker, but my gift is an atmosphere changer. I try to leave everybody who I come in contact with better. Facts, you do I that. I wanna make them feel better yeah. because I was in the room. I wanna change the atmosphere of in the room. People are gonna know that I was there. They, whoo, that young man, <laughs> who was he? And it's not about self-glorification, sure. but it's really about making other people feel better. I wanna give of myself that's so good. that they could be fulfilled. That's, That's why I married him so that I could feel amazing about <laughs> All the time. every single All day. The time. I mean, he uh. just levels up every day. Can you share the story about how you started being a barber? Because this inspires me every time I hear it because it. sometimes things are birthed out of bad places, bad yeah. dark spaces, and that launched him into where he is today. Well, my mom, you know, I came from a single parent home. You know, my father wasn't around. He passed away at an early age. And, didn't have a whole lot of money. She bought us some clippers and told me and my brother, go for what you know. Sure. So after a few toe up haircuts <laughs> of cutting each other hair, we began to cut each other hair and then cut the neighbor's the hair. Yeah. And something was birthed out of that. Now we built this community. Guys going out of school, coming over to the house, getting a haircut. And, um, you know, we became the popular guys in school that was cutting everybody's hair. And so, you're local to Charlotte, right? Yeah. Local, homegrown. What part specifically? He in Valley. I'm a Valley boy. Go on now. HV. <laughs> represent. <laughs> <laughs> He I love that. I mean, oh my gosh. so you were cutting all heads in, in the head. Valley area. Uh, and then I began cutting, you know, different people, uh, celebrities, when they would come in town doing concerts. The radio station, the guys worked on the radio. Sure. Uh, hair, and, and, that, and that door opened up for me to uh, work at the radio station. I was cutting all their hair. So it was really barbershop conversation on the air. Exactly. Amazing. So that's how I, I love that because it's like your gift made room um, to supersede you and take you to the next level. Because yeah. it wasn't just about cutting hair, but it's creating that conversation, sure. being that you know live personality there. And the next thing you know, they start saying, call in every morning. Well, now can you come up here every morning? And now it you is. have a full time. And it just grew. So cool. Are you making the most of your gifts? It's very yeah. Steve Harvey-esque. Yeah. Yeah. It's very Steve Harvey-esque. Yeah. Like and it. I know you've worked with Steve, right? That's right. I'm the producer for the locally uh, Steve Harvey show right here in the city. I also work with him uh, down in Dallas, Texas. So... Uh, I produce this show and I look at him again from afar because I don't have a personal relationship with, sure. with him, but I believe everybody should have a mentor and a mentee. Mm -hmm. So I look at somebody like him and what he does and say, wow, I like his gift. What can I do to, you know, exercise my gift in the similar fashion that he does? Mm. I, I feel that way about you, my brother. Oh, come That's on, man. Sure. Stop I'm it. To that. How much they pay you to say you. that? <laughs> 100 pennies. I'm going to double it. 100 pennies. 
Uh, so good, and there's so much more to go there, but Jacinda, I'd love to pass to you in that space when you were, um, I know formerly you were in a news uh, situation that wasn't lighting you up, but before that, how did you decide that this gift uh, that you have was a space that you were gonna begin? I was blessed enough to kind of stumble on it in the ninth grade. Okay. In the ninth grade, I'll never forget the day where we had a presentation to give and I shot my hand up so fast. I was so excited, I wanted to go first. And I, it was like someone said, who wants a million dollars right now? And I shot my hand up so fast, only to realize that no one raised their hand. And to be honest, people in the class would have rather got zeros than actually have to do it. And I said, something's, something's wrong with you. You're different, you're weird. You want to give presentations when obviously no one else wants to do yeah. that. And so then that's when I started to hone in on the craft. I, I joined the you know, forensic speech and debate team. I started, um, I did communi all communications, all theater, all everything. I just wanted to be the best at public speaking wow. because I, I always saw myself being a spokesperson for a firm. That's, that's the highest level I saw. Got it. Yeah. It wasn't till college that I started working for a cruise line, started hanging out with the DJ. He worked at the radio station, was like, hey, I'll come give you a tour. Gave me a tour. I met this, this jock that was working 7 to 12, Zach Daniels on The Freak Show. And typical, now radio people are crazy. So I walk in and he goes, hey, you know, you, you, know, you want to be an intern? I'm looking for an internship. I said, I'm, I'm, looking, or, I'm looking for an intern. I said, I'm looking for an internship. He was like, start Monday. And when I walked in on Monday, he gave me headphones and said, you sit right here, you go on air, which I assumed internship meant you go get coffee right. and, and make copies. And, and he put me on air and his show became number one. And I joined the station. Holy smokes. And I got my, I got my first show. So here I was in college and I, I started working all the different demographics from hot ACAC, um, R&B, you know, top 40 and everything. I started doing news. I worked, I produced the Steve Harvey Morning Show, Whoopi Goldberg. I mean, I just did everything. I was a traffic reporter. And so that's when this journey How many years started. did you expand in that space? I did two and a half to three years in Virginia Beach. Okay. And then quit. Chris Brown is from Virginia Chris Brown, Beach. Chris Brown, Pharrell, Pharrell, all of them, Missy Elliott, everyone. There's a lot of talent yep, from Virginia yep. Beach. All, all of What's them. in the water? All of them were there. Yeah, all it. of them used to come in and shut down the radio station. Yeah. And then um, uh, I graduated college and got a call from Charlotte, North Carolina. And I was like, where the heck is Charlotte? I have no <laughs> idea where this is. And I said yes to the job and I moved here like four days later. Amazing. Did not know a soul. Didn't know anyone, but I was offered a morning show, a co-host morning show position on radio. And was, I was that like, a good moving? It was an amazing move. Yeah. What'd you learn life. in that season? Radio was fun. So here's the thing that I learned: like all of it um, builds the recipe for your greatness. So you know, at the time, radio built me to to really love and enjoy improv, improvisational aspects. So it's like, you know, I'm not gonna ever bring the conversation down. It's like, let's go. Like yeah, we yeah, need yeah, a rap yeah. right now. Yeah. We need a freestyle. We need to do whatever. Like let's have fun. Let's create entertainment. Right. The the issue that then drove me into television was at some point I needed to grow up. I was in the clubs, I was having wow. way too much fun, and I was going down a direction that at some point, I wanted to, to become a woman and a lady, and I wanted to share information that was positive and not just entertainment. So left radio, went into television news, and that was amazing for my growth and, and building experience. But then too, the same thing, at some point I said, I'm destined for greater. It's not just to be a reporter or a weather forecaster. There's so much more in me, mm -hmm. and I'm, I'm looking to create a unique position. And what so, happens inside of you when you hit these invisible ceilings? Because I see this as a pattern, right? You're always looking to expand and break through. Mm, what, what, what happens internally and how does it manifest itself in you? To, to be honest, I see it in a lot of people. You hit, you hit a space of really depression. Sure. Because what you're saying is I fought so hard to get here. Now that I'm here, what's next? And you lose sight of, we get excited and hungry to grow. And when you don't know what's next, it, it can stagger you. So I really grew depressed in that season. I did not even know what to Google wow. for the next job. And the places I was going to, you know, like different churches I wanted to work for, they were like, you have no experience. You know, I see you're a reporter, that's great, but you haven't worked in this, you know, field before. So I was hearing no's here, I didn't know what to do, and I, I really broke down. And that's where my faith grew like never before. I started fasting and praying and um, writing. I started, I started trying something different. And then that's when I decided to quit my full-time job at the TV station. And I, I had no backup, I had no direction. I just knew that I was destined for greatness. That's all I knew. And Holy I said, I, I have to let this go because if I stay here in this comfort zone because of this check and because 
it looks like success to mm -hmm. other people, yeah. I will never know, you know, really what's out there. If I could speak on that, I like that you use the word depressed because many people stay in that space. Mm -hmm. That gut feeling when you wake up on on when it's Sunday evening. Sunday evening. And you have yes. that sick feeling in your yes. stomach, like I don't want to go. You start to cry. Start you to have cry. to listen to that. Sure. That's a tug, and there are so many people that are miserable, living their lives just in hell, really, feeling like they're stuck because they become prisoner of a paycheck, and they never really live their purpose or what what they was designed and destined to do. Sure. But she was just bold enough to step out and say. Forget it. I'm yeah. not going to be a slave to corporate America. I'm figure it out. I don't want to be here. Went in her office one day and said, I'm out. Mm -hmm. Yep. They're like, whoa, you're under contract. You can't do that. She's like, watch me. Sure. You know. I didn't, I didn't, for, I didn't quite say it like move. that. I didn't well, like she didn't. Yeah. <laughs> but pretty yeah. much, that's what it was. So let's stick there for a second because there's, there's not a lot of individuals that A, find what their gifts and their purpose and their passions are at a young age, and B, after they pursue them and when they get stuck in it, have the courageousness, the gall, the gumption to burst through these spots and find something new, mm -hmm. continue to expand. So what would you say when you break down courageousness or, or that ability, that boldness that you have to go out and get unstuck? How, where, where does that come from? Does it come from faith? Does it come from what you were taught when you were younger from family members? How do you break down To be down honest, that? Um, if you stay, you, you're, you, haven't, you haven't hit the brick wall all the way yet. Because mm. when you hit it to the point that you can't breathe, you can't even go in there anymore, you're like, that's when you'll say, I owe it to myself. Yeah. I owe it to my future. And more importantly, I owe it to the people that are waiting on my gift. Mm. I owe it to them. There are people that are waiting for me to go get it. Mm -hmm. So I have to yeah. figure it out. Yeah. No matter how scary it is, um, what I'll be honest in saying, I never lost. I le never lost money. I made more money. Wow. I never missed a bill. I never missed a payment. Wow. I mean, the world literally opens up for you the second you say yes and start to get in line with it. But you will sit. You'll keep hitting this brick wall over and over and over again, and never really truly feel what life has to offer you. So at that moment, I went into my boss's office, and and he was offering me a major promotion, another three year contract and anyone would take this job. And not only did I not take it, I asked if I could break my contract right then. Wow. And I said, God has called me for something greater. I do not have a job lined up. And I don't know why I said that, but he then said, I had a calling on my life years ago and I did not answer it, so I'll help you answer yours. Holy to this day, smokes. I still work for the TV station, that same exact one that I one day hated, but since then, have created an environment there that's conducive for purpose and impact that me and my husband are walking out every day. So you have to shake the ground sometimes for people to open up and see what you represent. Mm. If no, if you're not going to fight for what you represent, no one's going to know and they'll keep you in that same, that same lane. And one last thing on that point, as long as you're in that same lane, there's somebody waiting to be there. Yeah. They're praying for your position. Correct. They're dying to be there, and you're in the way. And you're holding it because up. Because you know you don't supposed to be there. It's something more for you. And that's what growth is all about. An apple that stays on a tree too long will eventually fall off and die. Don't wait until the tree is shaken to actually fall off. Move on your own. Meaning, step out and do what you're really called to do. Don't stay stuck in somewhere that you're miserable at all, you, you gotta go. So why not do it on your own terms? Love it. Uh, part of this platform is about helping others have the confidence to begin to speak things to an, into existence. Yes. And I know you believe heavily into that. Mm. My entire career as a professional athlete was because yeah. I was courageous enough to say I was gonna do it. Wow. And then almost I put myself in a position where I like had to figure yeah. it out yep. because I was so brave yep. in yeah. saying it. Talk to me about that approach to life, right? And I, you wear it on your sleeve, and it is so important in the the, the way that I live my life. Um, but it's very hard to conceptualize and to speak to others. I would love for you to channel that that approach and break that down for us. Well, I'm gonna flip it. Okay, I'm gonna flip it because there are many people that may be watching right now or listening right now saying, "Wow, I'm quitting my job <laughs> without a plan." Right. What happens when you don't have a plan? Because many people think, I got the talent to make it on a pro level. Sure. I.e. American Idol, or whatever. Yeah. You actually don't. Right. So how do you speak to those that 
want it and they don't have, I call it the formula. Sure. Because it don't always work. You don't always walk away and make more money. Correct. Let's keep it 100, right? But I do believe that it takes your gift, uh, drive, a lot of faith and prayer. And actually, I believe that it's not always what you know, but it's who you know. Sure. You got to network. You got to get out there and knock on those doors. Yep. You got to make yourself available. And even more importantly, it's who not who you? you know, it's who knows it's you. It's who knows you, yeah. My dad always How used to say that. How are you maximizing your platform? Mm -hmm. Love it. Mm -hmm. It's who knows you. Sure. Because I may know a lot of people, but they don't know me. I need you to know my name. Yeah. Okay? And then after that door is cracked open just a little bit. Kick it. You kick it in. Now you show off. Yeah. You, you kick got... it in. <laughs> Meaning use everything you got. Leave it all on the table. Yep. Sure. And that way you could say even if it doesn't work out, work out, I tried. Yep. And I gave it my best. Built skills along the way. Come on. Met new people. Come on. Mm. But eventually something's going to open up. Absolutely. I believe that what's, what's for you is for you. I ain't got to go down and chase down nobody else's blessing because I know what's meant for me. I'm going to get it. What's more powerful in your experience, attracting or chasing or grinding? I, it's both. Okay. It's both because you, you have to chase. The pursuit is, it's not about a destination. The journey is the reward. Amen. I'm going to say that again. I don't want to go over <laughs> nobody's well, One more time for the people in the back. <laughs> it's not about the destination. People seek that place. Like you said, that in sure. invisible ceiling. Sure. But it's the journey that you grow and that you learn things along the way. I can appreciate the journey because it's somebody's goal to get on radio one day. Now that you made it, then what? Yeah. Who are you influencing? Who life are you changing? Is that why mentorship is so important Absolutely. to you? Absolutely. Mentorship is so important. You got to put yourself around people that's going to point to you. Otherwise, you'll be drained. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, you got to put yourself around somebody that you can point to. Yep. Mm -hmm. Mentorship, mentee, mm -hmm. it works hand in hand. Come Where on. do I sign up? I'm talking, man. I'm dropping the mic. Where do I sign I up? If you, <laughs> I don't know if you feel this heat over here. <laughs> Where, where do I sign up? Sign <laughs> me up. I love Here's it. Here's the thing. Some people got the gift. Sure. And uh, when I first met you, not even in person, I saw you online. I said, he's got it. <laughs> wow. So I can recognize the gift when I see it. I recognize the drive when I see it. But you know it takes a lot more than just the gift. It takes hard work. Sure. You know, even when you work hard, even when you got the gift, it's, it's, the, it's the God rest his soul, the mama mentality. Mm. One more time. You know what I mean? One more it's time. It's like, I got to go get it. I got the talent. I got the work ethic, but let me go and knock down some doors. Yeah. So it, it takes all that wrapped up in and one. And if, if I could add into that, I think um, one thing that I've learned to live my life on is consistency. That's good. That, that to me is the difference between me and a lot of people or the person listening and someone else. That's the difference. That's the deal breaker. How consistent are you going to be in representing who you are, your true authentic self? Like... Um, there are people that after six months will die off. After a year or two, they're not seeing the numbers or the growth that they would like and they're gonna start fiddling with something. Like, are you gonna be consistent and truly believe it? If you don't believe in yourself, who else is gonna believe in you? Mm. And I'm gonna need you to go hard six months, six years. I need you to go in day in, day out. That's the person who's gonna make it. I mean, it's a guarantee. I mean, Ty said, not everyone that quits is gonna make money. I believe it's a fact you will. But wow. how hungry are you? Wow. How much are you going to fight for? How consistent will you be when no one is showing up? I when it. I left TV, I started Bible studies. I started doing Bible studies. God called me to create a space to have faith conversations and Bible studies. That's no money. That's no anything. And I kept fighting with him and saying, why do you have me doing this? And there are many Bible studies that I've done and even and me and Fly Tie together. No one came to them. Wow. But five years later, we're doing Bible studies for men, women, married couples, single women, spiritual retreats, going to Jamaica, doing prayer calls, doing give back, all this stuff. But it's like we had to show up when no one else would. So I really, truly believe, which is why I created the Uniquely Qualified Movement. I believe every single person in this world is uniquely qualified to walk into their purpose. And I believe everyone can make more money when they say yes to themselves and they're consistent in driving it out. That is a fact to me. That's right. Beat me to that. 
<clears throat> so let's live on that. Let's stay in Uniquely Qualified and that movement and its inception. How, how did that begin? It started from hell. It started from that invisible brick wall of, of being like, I can't stay here but how do I get there and what is there? And I believe all of us at some point live in that space. So it's a book yes. as well as... It turned into a movement. Sure. I, when I left the job and had no other job and didn't know where to go or what was going on, I started writing. I started yeah. writing. I always knew I would write a book, but I didn't know what it would be about, didn't know how, and so I started writing. You did not hire a ghostwriter. No, no, You wrote no, your own no. book. <laughs> Trust me. <laughs> PC, it yeah. was, was a ghost writer. It was grueling. It, it, it is, was, it's yeah. grueling. Blood, sweat, and Blood, tears. Blood, sweat, and tears. A lot Every of long day. nights. Yeah. She's screaming and yelling, oh, I can't do this. You, hours and hours, like, when I get me time, when I get my time. There is no you yeah. time, yeah. She was like, uh-uh. I got, I, I got this book in me that I have to birth. Every, out of me because the world needs it. Sure. Every chapter is a stage that someone will go through in this journey of figuring out what is my purpose and how do I get there. So I would share my story, I give you advice, and then, and then make you do the work. Yeah. I believe everyone has to do the work when yeah. you want something bad enough. Yeah. And then release that in 2017, and next thing I know, people started saying, I needed this, I needed this. So it grew arms and legs, and now it is a movement. We do conferences, we have a whole online community. Yeah. So I wanna create an opportunity for anyone who says yes to their purpose and doesn't know how to get there, I want to pair you with the right resources and the right people and the right community to get you there. Because Amazing. I believe we all have, like in the mentor-mentee philosophy, I have, the information I have in me was given to me for free. Like, I, you know what I mean? Like people poured into me all these years, all, all these times that I got to sit next to amazingly talented radio personalities that taught me how to be good on air or TV personalities. Like they gave me this stuff. I don't want to die with it in me. I want to give it to you. So I believe all of us have stuff that we've acquired along the way and there's someone else hungry for it. So we created a move, uh, a community that's basically just almost like a match game of like, this is what you want. Here are the people already doing it. Boom, y'all work it out. And that's online? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's Guys, uniquely for those of you For those yeah. of you watching, we're going to link that into the comment box below. You'll be able to find that link wrote to the book and to the community. Yes, we want to make sure we provide that for you guys as resources. Talk to me about this. Vision is so important. You guys have gotten to this place. We've talked about where you are currently. Where are you going? What's in the, what, what's in the windshield? Because you guys obviously live in a good space between uh, being in the clouds and in the dirt. Well, next week she's going to Chicago to do her second All-Star game. <laughs> oh, come on. Yeah. <laughs> so we have immediate goals. Yeah. So they've roped you from last year's Charlotte yeah. 2019. They say you did such a fantastic job. Please join us in 2020. Yes, yeah, the honor the Let's NBA go. the NBA call back and then um, I didn't know what I would do exactly and so even our boss was asking today, but I'm doing all the events. So all rising them. stars, dunk skills. Who are you games. most impressed with as a person that you've been able to see Ooh, in the NBA? That's good. In the NBA? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but just make it a person. That was a good mm. one. You got us stuck. She don't get I, stuck. You know what? I'll be honest. Eric. Eric Collins. In the NBA? In the entire NBA? Well, as far as the spokesperson. Uh -huh. In the entire NBA. That's who I would. All right, go ahead. That's Got the it. first person that jumps to my mind. I mean, I'm watching the athletes on the court, and they're awesome to me. But I, I'm watching athletes all the time, so my flair, as far as the excitement, it is not there. Sure. But there's this guy who's a spokesperson for the for the Charlotte Hornets, and he's just phenomenal at the way he he does his craft. I'm more looking there than I am anywhere else. I love so that. Eric oh. Collins. He's the the. Um, he calls the games for for the, box sports. Would you say style. analyst? Yeah. Would you say analyst? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. yeah, yeah. So you're yeah. able to see that craft, and you have that, such an appreciation what, for that craft. You I, know how good I'm, he is. I'm rarely blown away by things, um, but he just every time he opens his mouth, I'm like, dang, he's good. <laughs> <laughs> I love watching people. Yeah, but work and, their craft. there's no one like no one. It was just kind of a blank of like cool. who jumps out as far as a player is concerned. And see, for me, it's totally different. I mean, you know, mine would be like a Shaq mm. and a a Magic Johnson mm. because they was the greatest at their gift on the court but they didn't just let it die on the court. Wow. They flipped that thing. I mean, look at Kobe, he won an Oscar. Sure. Do you know how many businesses Shaquille O'Neal has? How many? I don't know exactly, it's a lot. but it's a lot. <laughs> it's a lot. These guys have made more money off the court than they would yeah. have ever made. Sure. Yeah. Michael Jordan, the greatest to ever do it on the court, but he became a billionaire off the court. These guys have taken their talent and their gift and their drive 
and still using it in a different arena. That's what I fall in love with. Mm. Motivate me somewhere else because we know what you can do here. Go do here. It would have been real cool if that you would have right. like won a World Series or something. But sure, <laughs> sure, sure. But great businessmen. Yeah. So. Absolutely. Uh, who's pouring into you as far as a mentor? Who who do you, who are you around immediately? Who is truly pouring into you as I'm sure there's very few that you let that into that space. Question. Who's pouring into you? I mean, you're say. She knows who I'm going to say. Who's so that? I, again, I feel like the opportunity of being a barber has opened so many doors for me to cut some amazing people. And I've cut many celebrities' hair and I've had one on one. But who's really pouring into you? You yeah. know, is the question. Yeah, yeah. I get a chance to cut this amazing man hair every week. And uh, he's more than a client, he's a friend. Okay. And he's definitely my mentor and it's my pastor. He goes by the name of Stephen uh, Furtick. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you must know. Never heard of that guy. <laughs> he, Never uh, heard of him. He's the pastor of one of the largest churches in the country. But every week I have a one-on-one -on -one with him. You know, many people just want to meet him, sit down with him. And uh, he's an author. He's a dynamic writer. Um, has wrote so many songs he, one song just went double platinum he's a wow. filmmaker a visionary uh he like i said he's a, a church pastor and a spiritual leader but he leads one of the largest uh, churches in the country but i always say it takes me about 30 minutes to cut his hair i spend about two hours with him every week it's a long wow. time i'm like when is he gonna be done We're <laughs> friends. Come home there, sure. yeah. every time i walk away from him i walk away from him feeling like like i can conquer the world yeah, yeah. But also, I give a lot to him as well. I'm sure. So it's a friendship. Yeah. You know, I don't want to meet people um, from a fan standpoint of view. I want to meet them as a friend. Amazing. You know, so he adds to my life so much, and I'm so grateful for who he is in my life. I look up to that, that man, although he's a little younger than me, mm -hmm. a couple years. How old is he? Um, he has a birthday next week. Really? He'll be 40 years old, the big four. -0. Wow. Yeah. He's so, doing amazing things. Do some amazing things. I mean, you know, he has an online community of millions, but it's really the one-on-one -on -one sure. personal relationship that means a lot to me. Uh, I've always admired him from afar, but now to have that one-on-one -on -one relationship or friendship with him, it just, man, it's, it's an honor. It's a blessing. Very cool. That's who pours into my life. He makes me want to be. I better. call after. I'm like, what, what did we learn yeah. today? <laughs> so I can get a taste Teach me of that. Every time yeah. I, I leave, need, I need the like, overflow. How was it? Yeah. So, yeah. what about you? For me, and I, I like this question because mentorship is not something you can force. Sure. There's a certain time that it's right, certain person that, it, that that's right. I know for years I looked for a mentor. Yeah. I prayed for a mentor. One time I found a woman, she was, she was perfect in all areas that I was looking for, but her time didn't allow for it. You know, and, and at one point there was a gentleman, I remember we sat across and, and had dinner and I said, I need a mentor so bad. And he said, right now, God is your mentor. Right now, there's wow. not anyone that can fit the space that you're looking for. And you have to know that all the answers to the questions you have, he's gonna provide you. And he will open up the door when the time is right and then organically speaking mm. I started volunteering for this woman's charity she started volunteering for mine and next thing you know we it organically evolved into a mentorship relationship that now I make sure to check in with her every couple weeks let her know what I'm what I'm doing she's extremely busy and always makes time for me and always wow. pours time and it wasn't until recently that I'm like she's my mentor yeah so as much as you may want someone and you look around your space and you don't see them just yet just know at the right time that relationship will be birth but until then don't force it sure you know say her name and what her organization is oh my gosh um mara campolungo mara campolungo of the sandbox she has an awesome organization where they walk alongside families who have children who are um terminally ill, terminally Ill or facing wow. a life-altering illness and she i mean Jeez. she literally says i am here and will go to the hospital and sit with you i mean it's not like just we are giving you a teddy bear and a care package she walks alongside these families and the second you walk into this organization you're touched for the, the rest of your life mm. me and fly tie volunteer for them endlessly anything that they need and so i did not realize that my volunteering was going to open up a doorway to my purpose but volunteering wow. will always be a secret to where you're supposed to be serving and where your purpose lies and that's what i want to say if i could just speak on that for one second a lot of people are stuck like wow i don't know what my purpose is or what my gift is what do you love to do sure go and do it and serve 
do it, do for, it for free. free. If you really love it, you'll do it do for it free. Do it for free, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> and eventually, your calling will be connected to your career. Yep. If you chase it long enough, right? You figure out how to monetize it. People pay you to do what you love. Yep. Mm -hmm. So do it for free. There's something beautiful that's birthed out of serving. And it's not a paycheck. It's the bigger paycheck. Did you miss it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a different kind no, of paycheck. It's a different it's, kind it's, of paycheck. It's, yeah. it's fulfilling. Sure. He was like, I don't need a dime for this, but I believe that your career always should be connected to your calling, and it starts with serving. And That's if we so have to good. be practical, then the big money comes later. Like, real practical money comes, yeah. and then it's double and triple what you were getting before. I'll eat these like, L's seriously. to be able to seriously. get to the long-term W, right? Come on. <laughs> yep. um, I've yep. just gone through a season of my life having to eat a lot of L's. Mm -hmm. and yeah. having to, a lot of L's that were in the shape of a humble pie. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, and it made me think a lot about the gift, yeah. the purpose, the passion, all of these energies that propel, right? But at the end of the day, we're talking about legacy. How do we want people to remember us in the way we made them feel? So let's talk on that. Let's chew on that as we round this thing out. Mm. What is legacy? When, when the both of you are uh, 85 or impending on the other side of this experience, what do you want people to remember and say about you? So, <clears throat> I want to do something. I want to do an activity real quick because you it. just, um, when I first came, I threw my W's up yeah. for Wes, right? <laughs> right? Stand for winning. Uh. Eventually you win. But I want you to make an L right now. Everybody make an L. So I like to say this. There's no losses. You said I was taking L's and I was assuming that you was talking about losses. <laughs> but flip that L. Lessons. Ooh. <laughs> I was going this way. Yeah, me too. Me too. I was going to a it. W. That's it. Uh -huh. So your losses, if you use them as lessons, become the wins. That's the wins. Yeah, I see that. Right? That's it's good. all growth, man. So when we talk it's about the it. L's, you're going to go through some losses, right? But the, you, it's all about perspective on how you look at them. I learned from that. Mm. And I took that loss and it made me better. It brought out character in me. It brought out integrity in me. It brought out a strength that I didn't even know I had, right? So I used that L to teach me a lesson and it made me better. That legacy leads you to your, the third L, the legacy. Lessons turn into legacy. How do you want to be remembered, right? I often say people may know me from radio or TV or I used to do comedy for several years, open up for Kevin Hart, you know, because I love to make people laugh. But my, my most, pr my proudest moment is being a father. Wow. Family is the most important thing, is being a husband, right? Because I know at the end of the day, what really matters is the legacy that I leave behind to the ones that love me most. And if I could live in them forever, long after I'm gone, then I'm eternally young and I live forever. Wow. That's true legacy. Yeah. Whew. I live on through my next generation forever and they become me. Mm -hmm. That's eternal life. Wow. Do you feel the same way, Justin? Yeah, oh, for sure. And I, I'll even take it back to when you mentioned vision. Yeah. Um, I really, truly have my hand, like, holding on to this vision and this glimpse that God gave me years ago. And I just, I believe that I'm called to speak in front of millions, but it's not just me by myself. I'm, I'm, I'm supposed to create a platform to put everyone else on wow. so that when I leave this earth, it lives on well, well after me where there, where there's this constant space of people that know that they're uniquely qualified and know that they can say yes to anything that God has called them to do. So like good. you, you can. And I mean, I literally shake people screaming this thing down. So um, every single day I'm working is to sell out arenas. I, I'm not at arena space yet, but every single day I'm telling someone like my goal is to get to Spectrum Center, which is 17,000 people. Speak God it. has already put me there, but he's Speak put me it. there for the Charlotte Hornets. And now I just need to switch that for Jesus and switch it for purpose. And, and, and I just, I mean, imagine where, how great this world would be if everyone was doing exactly what they love to do. Sure. It doesn't feel like work when you wake up in the morning. You get excited. Like I would get excited. I would get excited at, at night to go to sleep so I could hurry up and get up. 
to do what I have to do because I get to come be with you. I get to go, you know, um, work a game. I get to go work for the Panthers. Like everything I do every day, I love doing. Yeah. I love it. And it's like if everyone else had that same opportunity, like, and I, I don't even want to say opportunity. You have to fight for it and make sacrifices for it, and then it becomes your opportunity. Yeah. But it's like we all can get that, and so I just want to shake the world to, to go fight for it. I believe that when you speak it, you write it down. It becomes reality when you chase it. But when you get there, it may not always look like what you thought it was. What you thought it was. Mm -hmm. um, last year, we had the opportunity to be on a reality show. So her speaking millions, I'm like, wow. And she even wrote it down. Now we're in front of millions on, on the television. She even wrote down. And I wrote down Oprah, yeah. <laughs> Oprah Winfrey. Yeah. We was on the Oprah Winfrey network. Yeah. Mm -hmm doing a reality show in front of millions, but it wasn't what we thought, well, it wasn't what I thought it was yeah. gonna be. Yeah. She kind of said, okay, that's not what you think it's gonna be. I'm like, nah, it's gonna be great. We're gonna do this, da, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. It didn't turn out like I thought it was, but I was like, you spoke it, and this is what we said we was gonna do, and it happens. Everything that I've ever spoken has yeah. come to pass. Same. It really does. Everything. Yeah. Yeah. You can relate. I can relate. You can relate. So it's more. So what so, are you speaking now? So you what know, are you the, speaking? Yeah, yeah. That's, that's the real test. What are you speaking? And does it scare you? It needs to scare you. You need to be like, this is crazy. And it need because here's the thing. You're going to accomplish these goals you have. Yeah. You know, I, when I was young, I said stupid stuff like, I want to be on a billboard. Did it. You know, I want to, you know, work for the Hornets. Did it. I, I wanted to, like, when you get there, then what? Like Ty said, it's about the journey. So I want my dream and my vision and even the legacy to scare the crap out of me. And it, and it, honestly, do, it honestly does. But I know now I'm, I'm hungry for life. I'm hungry for the chasing yes. of it because this is the journey. This is the part that we love and we get to do every single day. But we really believe that we were brought together for more than just love and having babies, but really to create purpose and change and impact in everything that we do. And so that's what we make sure we live our life out for every single day wow. and she kind of finished my sentence you know you can speak those things and you can go after of those you can go after those things but is it for selfish gain right. like mm -hmm. why do you want to get there yeah you have to attach purpose to it mm. you know we're influencers man absolutely we're creating space man, <laughs> come well, on with it live their destiny. it has been magical sharing space with you guys yeah. and that's real talk it, it is very rare in this community that i've been able to be around two individuals who uplift so easily um so thank you for taking the time to come on to the show i would be remiss not giving yourselves the opportunity to open up and tell our community how they can connect with you where's the best space for them to reach out if they feel so compelled We're everywhere mm -hmm. you know we believe that um you got to maximize your platform so you can find us on all social media platforms mine is fly tie on air Okay. And uh, flytieonair.com, and they send you a link to all my social media. And uh, we do have a nonprofit, which is a ministry, and it's called Stolen Lunches, which means to steal away time to be fed by God. You can find that at stolenlunches.org. And yeah, and um, I, I would just say, qualified. yeah, I am uniquely qualified.com. I purposely created that site like that. So every time you, you're typing it, you're speaking an I am statement over your life. Yeah. I am uniquely qualified.com. Wow. And, um, and mistressinda.com and flytieonair.com. So find us, look us up, join us, come to any Bible study wherever you live. We have virtual Bible studies and uh, book us too. Hey. Connect with us. <laughs> we do <can> respond. <laughs> book Connect us. with us. 100%. And at any point, there's a slot in your mentorship program. Sign me up. Come on. Can't wait. I'm going to invite um, you. I would love to, love well, to be I'm invited invite in the you conversation. To be a guest. Well, I'll let you be a guest the first time. <laughs> but you got, you got something incredible in you, and I recognize that. I would love to come and have you. I love it. Speak to my guys. Room for I just want to. I just want to spend some time with yeah. you and anything else that comes out of that. And man, then let's do a one-on-one. -on -one. Absolutely. All right. Hundred percent. In another space created for greatness. Yeah. Oh, love see, it. I keep doing it. <laughs> I'm on fire. I'm shooting threes. Okay. Man, right. it, it has been amazing. Thank you two so much for your time, and uh, I hope that you guys out there in the creating space community get up, connect with these individuals, uh, and spend some time getting to know them. All right, guys. Thank you for coming on. Thank the show. you, Wes.